Hey guys, what's up? It's Jack, the Legend here, and today I'm here with another Minecraft Redstone tutorial. And in this two week's tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to make a fully automatic redstone wheat farm. That also, because it, I'm in 1.14 at the moment, puts all the seeds into a composter so you can get some bone meal. Now, remember, you can remove this if you want to keep the seeds or you're building this in 1.13. You just direct these hoppers straight into the chest instead of making it go into a composter and a chest here. Because I've got a mini item sorter at the back. Okay, now I've said that, let's get on to the tutorial. Actually, before we get on to the tutorial, I've got a few things to say. The first thing I'm going to say is that you have to have at least one villager per level of this wheat farm. Now these villagers can be any brown coat villagers if you're in the 1.13 version, or any straw hat villagers if you're in the 1.14 snapshot. So as you can see here, I've got two straw hats up the top. You can have two, three, four, or you can just have one, like I've got down the bottom. And as you can see, he just farmed a piece of wheat and planted it back. The second thing I'm going to say is that you can make this as tall as you want. But I have a railing system under here that picks up the wheat and you just have to rotate that to do it. So it's pretty simple. Okay, to start the tutorial, come to the middle of where you want your farm to be and build up three blocks. Then break the two blocks underneath the third block. Then place four blocks on each one of those sides. So one, two, three, four. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and connect them like this so you can create a 9x9 nine nine square. Just like that. Then circle around to the front and right in this middle block here, break that. Then continue to break all of those center blocks. So it's, there's a line splitting them in half and place blocks of redstone in those spaces. Now, grab out your regular rails and place them like this, then with a powered rail on the redstone block, and then curve them around like so. Now, you'll see here, when I place this here, it's going to wrap around like that to create an infinite loop. But we don't want that, so break that one, and then loop it around like that. So this one's going into nothing. You just want to continue doing this until the very end. And make sure to have powered rails on every single one of those. Now you don't have to use redstone blocks. You can place levers underneath the blocks, every single one of those middle ones, that would do the same job, but I reckon redstone blocks are probably just as easy. Redstones are also pretty common. Okay, so there we have the first part of our build done. Now it's time to work on the detection system over there and some of the transporting system. Okay, come to the front of the build and this block, this rail right here, stand on it and then walk to the side. Just like this, and you count three blocks, including the one you're standing on. One, two, three. Then look directly in the block in front of you, and place a temporary block, and then place hoppers going into that one, then another hopper going into that, and another hopper going into that. So you have a three long hopper line that ends right before it goes underneath this platform. Then you can break that temporary block and place it to a regular rail, or like any type of rail, on the first hopper, with a minecart and hopper on it, and then you have to break that rail, just like that. Place a slab at level with this platform, with an upside down piston, that you will then power with anything, that will push that slab down, to go inside of this block, of this uh, minecart here, just like that. And then you can add a few extra, so it goes over it like that. So that is our first part of the system complete. Now you want to grab out a detector rail and place it right there, going sloping downwards. Then grab out some building blocks and a redstone repeater and place it some. So the repeater is coming out of this detector rail and is on four ticks delay. And then place two more of these with so some more building blocks underneath them. And make that go into a block one diagonally up with a piece of redstone up on it. And go one diagonally up to the side, another piece of redstone on it. And then come three more blocks towards the slab thing here with three more redstone repeaters set on four ticks delay go into a block that's one diagonally up which you will then place a fence gate under this could be any type of fence gate this is to stop the minecart from pushing 
from falling through. Okay, so we've built this system. Now you can add a few more rails to it to make sure that it works and grab out a minecart with a hopper on it, put it on a powered rail and push it. And as you can see, it waits a little while and then the gate opens and the minecart can go through. Now, you can either add a rail, like a powered rail there instantly. You have to be very careful when powering it because you don't want to power any of these repeaters, the gate or lock of a hopper. Or you can add it a bit further around the corner. So if I fly over here, you can see right here, it goes a little bit and then gets powered and gets pushed up a water system. That was perfect timing, wasn't it? Okay, it is now time to place the water and the farmland. Now you can either just place dirt and hoe it, but if you're in creative and just want to build a cool sort of looking farm, you can always use some farmland like that I have here. Okay, so now come to the middle of your rail system, which is right there, so four blocks in on each side, so one, two, three, four, and then that one extra block is the middle, and place a slab like so. Then place four pieces of farmland around them really quickly, and then place a water bucket inside. Sometimes you can see there the farmland goes away, so you have to quickly replace and replace it, or just grab out a hoe. And now you can fill up this 9x9 nine nine square with farmland, and every bit should be hydrated. And after you've done this, you want to grab out some seeds and plant it. So, just some regular seeds, some wheat seeds. Now, this will not work for carrots and things like that. But if you would like a tutorial on how to do that, leave a comment down below. Because villagers have very interesting properties. So just place wheat seeds on every single one of these. Just like that. And soon you should see these blocks get hydrated and all of that. And you can see they start growing instantly. For this final part of the bottom layer, other than the transportation system, which you can add in a bit later if you want to have it two-story, but I will show you how to do that, is the transportation and composting system. Okay, to start this system, place three droppers, not dispensers, going into the air. One, two, three. So the bottom one has a hopper going straight into it. And then right behind the front of that, so this is the front here of my farm, right behind that, place a comparator coming out of the bottom one, going into a repeater, which then goes into a comparator which you can turn on by right clicking, which you then surround with redstone, and then bring a line really close over to these droppers here, and then grab out some building blocks, which I forgot to list, I'll grab out some magenta con concrete because it looks beautiful and place some redstone dust going into this middle dropper here. Now, so now, if you put any item in this bottom dropper, you can see it instantly gets spewed, spewed out at the top, so I'm just quickly take those out. So now we need to hook up the hoppers to the composting and item sorter system. Okay, for the composting and sorting bit, come one block away from this uh, redstone here on the corner, and place, don't place the chest, and then come two blocks forward, so one, two, and then on the third block, where like right in front of those two, place a double chest, and next to it, place another double chest. Just like that. And then on top of the first double chest, or from the front, the double chest on the left, place another double chest on top of it. So you should have like a stubby L or a corner. Now, place a hopper going into each one of these double chests. So it should look like that from the back. Now come over here to this uh, hopper here that's going to the double chest that, that hasn't got anything above it. Place another hopper going into that one, and then diagonally upwards, place another hopper going to that hopper there. So there shouldn't be one in this one that's crammed between the two chests. Now place a composter on top of the chest that has not nothing on it, just right there, like that and a temporary block on that on um, that hopper right there and then place a hopper going into that temporary block and then break that temporary block. So that's all you should have from a side view, from the back view and from the front. For this final part of the sorting system you're going to need some blocks you aren't going to be sorting 
three wheat, some hovers, some redstone torches, some comparators, some repeaters, and some redstone dust. Okay, start by placing a hopper straight on top of this composter. Composter by holding shift, like so, and clicking. And then place a temporary building block, which you're going to need building blocks as well, diagonally one up from that hopper you just placed. Place some hoppers going into that, and then bring that hopper chain right over to above your dropper, like so, and then break that temporary block. Now, grab out your building blocks and place one right behind this hopper that is going into another hopper which is going into the top double chest, one more behind it and then one diagonally down. Then place a comparator coming out of the hopper which goes into a piece of redstone which then goes one down. Then place a repeater coming out of the block that's one diagonally down that has the redstone on it which goes into a block which then you place a redstone torch on. Now, grab out 20 of the blocks you aren't going to be sorting, hold down your left click and drag it across the last four slots of your hopper, and then place the three wheat in the first one. So, and so one of them will go into this hopper here, and then the two will stay at the top. So now if we put uh, some wheat into this, you don't have to do this, I'm just testing or some seeds, so I'll put a few seeds, not too many, 16 seeds, that will give us a level probably, hopefully. Yeah, you can see that has given us a level, and if we put some wheat in, it will not go into that composter, it'll go straight into this bottom chest here, as you can see, and this clock is clearly working, so now we've got all of our wheat down here. So now it's time to wall off this area. Okay, to wall off this area, I like to use the floor block that I'm using and some glass because I think it's nice. I use my floor block as a wall so right up to the very dirt top area and then I use some glass for three blocks. So I have three blocks of wall, three blocks of glass. And you be careful when trying to wall off this because you don't want to cut off any of the redstone like that because that would mean this system would not work. So do not place a block there. And you don't want to block the minecart from getting to its destination. So be very careful when placing your blocks. So let's just speed this up. Okay, so the bottom wall is complete. You can now add your your glass wall, but leave a little gap to put your villager in. So I'm just going to leave a little biggish gap, like a 2x2 two two hole. So I, it isn't too hard to push him in. So just place the glass like this. Now remember, you don't have to use glass. But I like it because it gives a natural source of lighting and I think it's kind of nice to watch the villager farm although that sounds kind of evil keeping a villager actually this whole concept is generally evil now you can I just realized you can place some blocks on top of this repeater by holding shift and placing it and this does not cut off any of the redstone and it makes it look much better so now I need to add some glass in that corner so now it's time to prepare our villager before we push him in to the big farming world. When building an automatic wheat farm, you need to make sure your villager has an empty inventory. You can get a villager with an empty inventory by breeding it using a villager breeder. There are plenty of tutorials on how to build this on YouTube or converting a zombie villager into a normal villager. Okay, to prepare the villager, you need to get him into a, like a little box like this and it needs to be one with a straw hat, like I stated earlier. So this one's a farmer, and then you have to grab out eight sacks of wheat seeds and then throw them into the villager's inventory by just throwing them on the ground. Just chuck eight sacks onto him, and you can see he's picking them all up, and if I throw like an... Oh, my phone's gone off. And if I throw another seed on, another stack of seeds, see, he won't pick it up. So that means he's got a full inventory. So... Now you can let him into the farm by pushing him through a fence gate or using a minecart and rails and he'll instantly start working like that. So make sure you've got your farm activated and then you can box that right up. Okay, so now it's time to do the roof. Now to do the roof, it's basic, it's like really simple. But I'm going to be doing it in two different colours. I'm going to be doing it in a black concrete and let's go with a grey concrete. Yeah, it seems good. Now the grey concrete is the concrete you're going to be placing your rails on. If I place some grey concrete really quickly here. 
Now you don't have to use grey concrete, you can use the one uh, block like say black concrete, but I'm just doing this to show you. Uh, okay, so now we've got that, we can grab out our rails, we'll need powered re and regular rails, we'll need pumpkins, uh, jack-o'-lanterns actually, not uh, pumpkins, jack-o'-lanterns. And then we also need some redstone blocks or some leathers, so I'm just going to use redstone blocks. So again, place some redstone blocks down the middle of your build, starting on this grey thing here, just like that, on the grey shape, so not on the very edge. And then place powered rails on each and every one of those. And now you can just start your swervy pattern from one of the corners on the grey side, so remember, start on the grey, and then just keep on curling around. And here we'll have to add an extra one to manoeuvre it. We just have to do the same thing we did on the bottom. Just like that. Come to each corner of the grey square and place a jack-o'-lantern in each one of those facing, like, sort of, any way. Because jack-o'-lanterns allow light to shine through the bottom like that, and you can place rails on top, because you can't place rails on top of sea lanterns. So now the last thing we need to do is place a redstone block here, or power that with a lever, and put a powered rail, and then build this tube right up, one down at the bottom. And so this one comes down, falls, lands on this power rail. Make sure this one's powered by a lever. For some reason, when I find I power, when I power it with a redstone block that's here, it does not work. So make sure to power it with a lever. So now your rail will come up a transportation system and then go right along there. Okay. Before we move right onto the transportation, I'm just going to let you know that I'm going to be showing you guys two different ways of transporting your minecarts. The first way is going to be a rail powered way that just brings it up to the top and the location where you want it to be. The second way is going to be a bubble column that is really effective and fast for higher story, um, like lots of stories of these. But the railway is great for only two stories. Okay, so the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to break this lever and place another Powered regular rail. Make do a little turn, little turn, little twirl, and then another one because I don't think rails can't go up on corners like that. And then make it go diagonally, one up. Like this. You might have have to add some more powered rails in these sections, and then just slowly bring it to the top, like this. You can do this many different ways. Just experiment, I say. Now you are going to find different problems within these. Some might be not being able to turn when going up a straight like that. So there's ways to fix that. You can go like this. Go up. And then turn onto that. Just like that. You will have to add in some more powered rails. So now you can just power them using levers. So I won't place the lever there, because as you can see that opens up that trapdoor, and we do not want that. Oh yes, when building these you probably want to turn it off by um, breaking that redstone there. Or you can just break your minecart. So you, do, you don't want to place it there, that will power that, but it will also power this, so we don't want that. So instead you can Come over here, and if you have got a slab there, you have to make it a full block like I've got. And then place a lever on that block, because that'll power both mine cars and won't interfere with any of our redstoning. So now, if we place a minecart on here, activate our redstone by just grabbing a redstone, redstone dust and pressing that. Now that's just a simple way of deactivating it when um, you need to do some maintenance, so just make sure to remember that. And now we can place our minecart on this, and we can push it up. As you can see, it'll go up, and then it'll continue its journey along. So let me just break this now. So as you just saw, that was pretty fast, but it does take quite a bit of materials to do that one story. So it's good, and it's much simpler than the bubble column when you're doing what, two stories. But so now, I'm but um, when you're doing like say three or four, or you're trying to get to the top of a second story, you can use the bubble one. So let me show you how to do, use a bubble column elevator. Okay, our second way of doing this is the bubble column elevator. And to create this, 
place your soul sand onto the side of this L shape that we've created here. With your powered rail going into that soul sand, and then place a regular rail on top and then break that regular rail. Then create a shape around it, like so, like a U shape. So it's not on, so this block is not on top of this powered rail like that, because we do not want that. And then place a sign on one of these blocks and then hold shift and place another sign on that sign. So the water can't come flowing out that we're going to place there. So when I place water, you can see it doesn't flow out. Okay, so now you can place blocks right around and using blocks of your choice. I like to use the blocks that are on the wall. You need to bring it up to the level with the um, rail and then one more block higher. No, level with the rail. Just level with the rail. And then do the exact same thing you did at the bottom, where you have one block open, but do it at the top and make it so the shape is a little bit longer and flowing out into the side your sorting system's on. You need to add that sign in there as well. Oh, and you can add something on that sign, like you can add up on the bottom sign if you want, which I just like to do sometimes. And before you place a cap on this to stop the minecart flinging out because of the bubbles, go down with your water bucket and place some water on every single one of those layers. So don't place it at the top and let it run down, because otherwise you won't have this beautiful bubble column that pushes the minecart up and then pushes it onto the railway. So now you can add a black concrete or whatever block you're using at the top, like so. Then come one block down from here, like so, and then place two like this and two powered rails. Two blocks like that and two powered rails on top and then power that with a lever or a redstone block and curve it around and just using some minecarts, bring it right along to this side, this rail here. And remember, you cannot curve while going up, which I hate. I just hate it because I'm always going, oh damn it. It's just so annoying. So you have to curve and then have an extra one to go up. So the minecart will go up this elevator, get pushed onto our rails, and then get flung up here. And remember, you don't want to make it so the minecart can't get up the slope. So always add in some extra powered rails. Or you can do some testing and make sure you have the minimum so you don't have to waste all your gold. Okay, so there you have the two different ways of transferring your minecart. So now let's put this one to the test. To test that this works, I'm coming down to the bottom and placing a minecart on this detect rail, which will activate our timing system, which will then open. Oh, we need to power this rail. That's probably the most important part. Okay, to power this, we need to just place a lever under the block the powered rail is on. And fun fact, you cannot place a lever on soul sand. Like you can't, it doesn't allow you. Which is super weird. But, so place it under the block the powered rail is on, so you then push it forward and then it will go straight up, like you just saw. So to be honest, I think doing this one on a two-story farm, like this, is a bit of overkill, but it does look pretty cool. But doing this on a three-story farm, I reckon will definitely save you a lot of materials. Okay, it's time to move on to adding the farm again. Okay, to add the farm, you just want to do exactly the same thing. Add the walls and everything do the exact same thing. So you want to grab out your slab, let's get, refresh your mind, come to the middle, place a block there, grab some dirt out, I'll do the survival version, and then grab out, grab out your diamond hoe. I need a diamond hoe, ho, ho, ho. I need a diamond hoe. Then place your dirt around that slab, place some water in the middle of that slab, and then hoe all of that land. Now fill in your 9x9 nine nine square with that farmland that you can hoe, but I'm just going to use the creative version of farmland, which is literally called farmland. Okay, so I've done that, so now I just have to add in these walls on the side. And honestly, I think if you make this like 10 stories high, it will look so cool. Because you'd have like a sky tower of farms. So, And you can also cap this off here, so no, no mobs fall into that. And when adding more stories to this, you have to rotate the each way the rails go. So it might drop off this time next. Or so, say this time it dropped off there. Next time it'll have to drop off there. And then there. And then that side. So you just have to 
switch between the two sides. So now I need to add my gloss, which is purple stained gloss. Actually, I'm gonna go white this time. And just spruce it up. And remember, add that door for the villager. Now the top village is a bit hard to get up there, so you might want to use a minecart and rail system to push it up there. Not the one that you built over here, a different one. Because otherwise he'd be going under the farm. Okay, so now I'm going to quickly speed over when I have a villager in this farm area, and I've planted the stuff. So, let's go do that. Okay, I now have my villager here. I'm going to give him all of my wheat seeds. Oh, they're called wheat seeds now. I remember when they used to be called seeds. And then I can let him into the farm. Go on, villager, be free! Kind of, I guess. Then I can block that up. And then add a roof on here. So if you remember, you have to use um, pumpkins for the, um, the roof lightning. But because this is my last story, I could use anything that I want. I could use glowstone, sea lanterns, or if you're in 1.14, you can even use the new ha lanterns. I just almost call them Hamptons. The lanterns, which hang from the roof and look really cool. So if you're going for more of a rustic sort of auto farm look, you can use those lanterns. So I'm going to use them on the second story here. Let's just get inside here. Lantern. I'm going to place some more of these because I'm not sure what their light level is exactly. This is just around here. Just a few in the middle. I don't want them to look perfect. Just like that. Yeah, that looks good. Now I can hop off, hop out, get out of here, and enjoy the wheat farm. Unless my minecart is still is not gone because I didn't I forgot to put it back in. Let's see if it's still going. Up, oh, yep, there it is. There, there it is coming along. So, like because I broke those blocks, you could even add in a um little system here. Probably I'll probably add that little viewing thing. It's always fun to look at minecarts. Now, one thing before I finish up the video, although the farm is all done and our composting system's finished, everything's finished, but when you want, when you walk out of your 32 chunk range, say I go fly really far away and that's out of my chunk range, you want to turn this off before you leave. Because if the minecart is in that area, in there, and um, you walk out of the range, sometimes it can get glitched there and stay there, so you have to break your farm to go and push it. Which is a real pain. So a way of doing that is just, a way of stopping is to just break that. So next time it comes around, I'll speed up a little bit. Uh, it will not um, go around another time. So you can just wait here for like uh, a few, like a minute longer. And then you can go and be like, okay, so it's safe now. So as you can see, it's gotten stuck there because this redstone current has been cut off. When you're back, you can just add that redstone dust and it will be powered. And then it will go do its thing again. Okay, so now you know how to build a super awesome, fully automatic villager wheat farm that composts all the seeds so you can get a bunch of bone meal, so that's 20 in like, what, 10 minutes, and a bunch of wheat to make as much bread or cake as you want. So remember, if you'd like to see a tutorial on how to make a potato farm, make sure to leave a comment down below and I will definitely make one in the future. So. That's going to be the end of this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please leave a like, comment, and remember to sub a dub a subscribe if you're new. We're like 10 subs away from 900 at the moment. It might even be closer when this video is up. So, I will see you guys later. Peace. Oh, and remember, stay carbonated.